So a couple of weeks ago, I heard the term unhoused. To use that instead of saying that somebody's homeless, how many of you have heard of that term? It's, it was new for me, and I really like it. So I'm a street performer, magician, as well as telling stories, and, and my home pitch is, is in Lancaster, at Lancaster Central Market. And there people know me, people look for me. If I'm not there for a while, they'll ask me where I am. I've seen kids growing up, little kids bring me treasures and I'm kind of like their personal magician and grandparents, when their families come to town, they'll bring their families for me to do magic for them. So it's a place that I'm known, it's home. But I also like to go to other pitches, new places. And you never know what you're gonna find because it's new people, new environment. And there could be a cop or security guard that tells you to move on, or there could be a shopkeeper says, we don't want you here, or maybe another performer doesn't want to share their space. You never know, but usually after I talk to them for just a bit and tell them I'm a grandpa and a former school teacher and I'm just here for a couple hours, then they'll say, ah, you know what, you won't bother anybody, go ahead, I'll, I'll sit and watch and I'll let you know if it's a problem. And then after, you know, when I'm done after a couple hours, I'm packing up, nine times out of 10 they'll say, Kind of what my parents used to say. You know, that was fun. Next time you're in the area, make sure you stop by. And for just a little bit, I've created another little piece of home. It was probably 12 years ago, 10 years ago, I was at Fells Point in Baltimore the first time. If you haven't been to Fells Point, it's a little city park. And over here is the water taxi stand where tourists come and go. And I, I'd been performing at Inner Harbor, and I'd heard about Fells Point, and I thought, I'm going to go over to Fells Point on Friday afternoon, just see what's happening. And I get over there, and there's 25 or 30 people in the park, no other street performers. I'm thinking, great. And then I look at the people, and I'm thinking, yeah, uh, these people are homeless. That's the word I used back then. Not so great. So there's a couple guys sitting there on the bench. I thought, well, I came over here. I might as well perform. And, and I, I started talking to them, found out their names. You guys mind if I set up and perform here? And the one guy was John. I remember his name was John because that's my grandpa's name. And he was kind of the leader of the group. John said, no, go ahead. What, what you going to do? And I said, oh, I'm going to do magic. Give me a couple of minutes and I'll show you something you won't believe. And John just started laughing. He said, you know we're all homeless, right? There ain't nobody who's going to put no money in your tip box. You know that, right? I just smiled and said, John, it's okay. I came all the way from Lancaster, Pennsylvania to do magic just for you guys. If all I get is a smile, it's going to be okay. So I set up my stuff, put my little sign out, put $1 in the tip box of seed money, and I, start, I say, John, come on over. The rest of you guys, come on over. And within 10 minutes, I had a whole crowd of people there. It was so much fun. They were laughing. They were talking. And after a while, John says, Damn. I told you I wasn't putting no money in that tip box. The way you made that card turn over like that in the box, nobody touching it, I'm putting in a dollar. No, I'm putting in two. And after that, other people started putting in money. And it was a lot of fun. And then and the, and one of the kid, uh, ladies said, but you ought to hang around till the college kids show up because Fells Point's in an area of bars and restaurants. Those college kids, they got money, but you better watch out. Some of them are mean drunks. And those girls, when those girls are drunk, you wouldn't believe the language that comes out of their mouths. I know their mamas wouldn't believe that their ladies knew that. And it was a lot of fun. There was maybe $10 in my box, I don't know. And then I noticed there was this guy around the backside of the group. Was, I tried to engage him before and he just mumbled something back off. And he was going around the backside of the group and I could see him out of the corner of his eye, I was just waiting. And I kind of turned my body and he zipped in and he grabbed the money out of the box and took off. And John and the other people stopped him. They weren't letting their money run off down the street. And they brought the money back and I said, thanks, that's my lunch money for tomorrow. And John says, oh, don't worry about him. He tries that stuff all the time. But we got your back and, and don't you be spending our money on a meal tomorrow. At the church just up the street, we got Saturday club up there. Saturday Club, I said, what's Saturday Club? He said, well, that's when we make a meal together. We prepare the meal, we serve the meal, we clean up afterward. It's Saturday Club, and all the people are saying, yeah, you should come to Saturday Club. John's saying, you'll be here at 11. I'm like, well, don't, don't I have to sign up or something? And John's like, no, this is home cooking. I'll just tell him you're my guest. So the next day, I'm at Inner Harbor performing again, and the tips were good, the crowds were good. I didn't watch the time. 
It was one o'clock before I looked at my watch. I'd missed John's invitation. I grew up in small town, southeast Iowa. And my dad would always bring these strange and wonderful people home for dinner. Mom would just sit another place. And, and us boys, we'd have a great time listening, asking questions, finding out about these people, where they're from, what they do, where they're going. These strange and wonderful people. And then at the end, my parents would always say, you know, if you ever come through town again, make sure you stop by. I missed that chance at Fell's Point. I was that strange and wonderful person. I wished I had gone. I went back on Sunday afternoon. The place was cleared out. There was a couple people over by the taxis. There was nobody in the park. Nobody. I don't know what happened. I don't know if the police had made a sweep come through like they do sometimes, moved everybody out. I don't know if John and his friends had another home that they go to on, on uh, Sunday afternoon and not Fells Point. I don't know. But I, I never got to apologize to him for not taking him up on his hospitality, his home cooking. And that's why I like the term unhoused. John was unhoused. He certainly wasn't homeless. Thank you.